Henry, number one. Go. Let's go. How could it be otherwise? How could it be otherwise? The state superintendent of public instruction runs as a Democrat and ousts Republican Governor Scott Walker by a very thin margin, less than 1%. That's the number one story. JR. Um, a year ago, as we sat here, we looked at the field and went, who are these Democrats? Who, who knows who they are? And they really hadn't really kind of coalesced yet. How are they going to raise the money? What's the message going to be? Walker's going to have so much money. What's going to go on? And then, like I said, Canary in the coal mine, Patty Schottner. And then Rebecca Dallet. And then Caleb Frostman. Now, to Walker's credit, it wasn't a blowout. It was actually more than 1%, um, 1 point some percent, yeah, 30,000 votes. Or, two or something. But to Walker's credit, it wasn't a blowout. He closed the gap. But you also have a guy who's way better known, had way more money, and I think way more outside help, and he lost. And there could be a number of things going into that. One, Walker fatigue. You know, you're asking for a third term. We're not used to third terms in Wisconsin. Tommy Thompson's the exception to the rule. Most of our governors have not done more than eight years, right? So third term is kind of like, well, what, what would you do differently? What's the message going to be? But it felt like a fourth, given the 2012 recall. Absolutely. And Walker, Walker struggled all year from people I talked to and finding the right message. He changed his stripes in some ways. If you go back and look at how he ran in 10 and 14, he was going to clean up government, downsize it, going to cut your taxes, the conservative answer, compassionate conservative answer to all these problems. He went from that to being a guy who wanted to be the education governor to investing in all these things, to spending money. It, in some ways, didn't really jive with what we knew of Walker. Then you add in, like, they ran for president. People weren't happy about that. He had a hard time getting, overcoming that. The Trump factor, how did Trump play into all this? You know, I mean, you can't deny that Donald Trump affected everything anymore. He's a dominating factor in Wisconsin politics, uh, national politics. All these things are going to play. Then you have Evers, who was, like, dismissed by Republicans, always this milk toast education guy. But he won three statewide elections. Won three statewide elections. He still had low name ID yep. going through. But you watch that primary. There were like 14 Democrats running that primary. And Evers, it was almost always his to lose because he'd won st run statewide and won. I think he ran two other times and lost before the he won the first one. So he's got five statewide bids under his belt. He was just better known. He'd had the constituencies behind him before. And he just kind of rode this gradual ascension the nomination. He started out with a base of 28 to 34 percent of Democrats who had an opinion. Yeah. And, and he just had to build from that and not, as Obama said, not do stupid stuff. And he got the nomination. Rewind, your week in review is sponsored by the Transportation Development Association of Wisconsin. Sharing one goal, Enhancing the quality of life in Wisconsin through the development and maintenance of a strong transportation network. The Transportation Development Association of Wisconsin. It's how we get there.